What's up, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Anyway, Sunday. Sunday night stream, Sunday stock talk. We are going to talk about futures. Well, we're going to talk about the market this week, actually, as a matter of fact. We're going to go over the futures because that's ultimately what drives the order flow. We do have a Powell speech this week. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to see how that goes. Uh, so we have Powell this week, so we have that to look forward to. Uh, and then we got uh, CPI next week. So this next couple weeks, as a trader, I'd probably take day by day. I don't know if I would swing too much into this. Uh, I'd keep it small. Like uh, The only swing I took over the weekend for me was a short swing. Uh, I grabbed SPXS. I thought we were just a little overbought. Um, that being said, CPI comes out bad in two weeks. We're headed to October lows, right? And if CPI comes out good, um, then the fun continues. Chop. Stream is delayed. How delayed? So let's kick it off. It's like we normally do. It's the dollar, the Russell, the NASDAQ, the S&P. Uh, and then we'll take it some time. We'll turn to you guys. You do have to be subscribed. Uh, but when you click on that uh, subscribe button, you get to talk in the live chat. It's not members only. It's just subscribers only, um, I think. Should be in theory. Anyway, let me know if you're not subscribed and you can chat. I'll change it real quick. As far as the dollar goes, I got to say, that's looking like a bull flag. I think I'm going to have to go long the dollar. Uh, and I think I'm going to have to do it U.S. CAD style. What's up, King James? Mine's not broken. Sweet. Man. Not a good look. Uh, whether you're new here or not, you just probably won't be here next year. If you see it coming into a yellow box of mine like this, and you go buying right then and there, uh, just know that I call you job security because you're usually who's buying my shares uh, and it's usually a bad trade. But I'm kind of bullish oil, kind of bullish a dollar. So I thought, oh, if I'm bullish oil, then no. I want oil to go down. I'm tired of the bulls running the jobs. Hey, Lori. Uh, had to set Steve and his solving the money problem straight. He's then lost his mind. What'd you do? I, I can't even watch. Like his videos are just bad. I, it really annoys me, honestly. I don't like talking bad about other people, but he literally talks crap on everybody. And he's like, "Oh, I'm autistic." And he like, you know, me and Elon were autistic. You know, he like this like it's a superpower. And like you guys wouldn't understand. You guys aren't as smart as us because we're autistic. And I'm like, what you, you're stupid is what you are. I, I shouldn't have said that, but it annoys me. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it gets me so I can't really watch his videos anymore uh, they used to be good San Fran, San Fran <laughs> oh so he made fun of California you've never heard me do that <laughs> uh, alright you have heard me say okay just making sure all right, let's. Uh, I've stared at this long enough. If I'm long the dollar, hey, okay, let's check something else. Let's check out shorting the uh, the euro USD. See, that looks like a bear flag. That that might be the better play. Let's at least zone it out first. So we had a pretty decent breakdown over here. So I want to keep an eye on that area. Something definitely happened right in here, though. And I really hate when they're just like back to back like this. Uh, and guys, if I don't ever fill this in, it's still a zone. But I started filling them in because they would get close like this and people would think that's the middle. If you want these zones, guys, th that is the, the Patreon link in the description, Tier 1. Uh, you do get my, my zone link. It's, it's posted on the Patreon wall. You just got to go find it. Like, just scroll all the way to the bottom. Uh, I posted it a couple times. I'll try to keep it pretty regular in there. Uh, but also the uh, the growth account. So uh, we started with zero, January 1 of this year. I do 150 bucks a week. Um, I want to say it's... Yeah, so if you see me talking about this, uh, we have not lost a single dollar. Uh, Ford shares have gone down. We own a hundred of them. And then they paid an eighty-dollar dividend. It didn't count the dividends. So that's that irks me right now, because that should be up here. Very annoying. So technically, I'm down thirty-seven on Ford, but I got magic money in the account. 
Makes me want to switch the account, to be honest. Anyway, that's all tier one. So if you ever want to set alerts to these boxes, that's you can do all that there. Um, hang on. I want to check out this area. That's all I need to know for now. Yeah, markets did go in sin mode. We talked about that on Thursday and Friday morning about how Fridays can be green. Fridays have been doing that. Like, they just go for it. I'm this close to just buying zero date expiration, just Friday expirations, just calls, Friday morning. And, like, lotto play. Like, uh, you know, roll up, put your chips on the table right at the bell, see how much you have at the close, you know? I don't even trail it. Just see where you're at. Go at the money. Boom. I'll see you at the close. <laughs> I wonder just how much that would pay. So, if you're long the dollar, you would be short this. And that's kind of making that bear flag play. I want to check a couple more things out real quick before I do. This one might be the better play. At least we're below that zone. That's a type, technically a type 3-ish. I'm going to short this. That's the better chart. And I do use Owanda. Uh, right, there really just is not a, another broker to even talk about when it comes to Forex. It's not even worth the conversation. Owanda does pay me per trade. I do say that. But it has nothing to do with that. Uh, not an ad. I would never care. I would pay commissions to trade on Owanda. Plus, I have this uh, in your settings. You can put your stop loss where you want. So as you're typing out how much you want to buy, your stop loss is already there and just moves. Amazing. It's the best thing in the world. If I could create a brokerage, an app, it would be TradeStation with that feature and trades and a debit card. And then that would be the ultimate brokerage. I would literally be on YouTube telling everybody you're stupid if you're not in there. Direct access, debit card. Uh, in the settings, you can adjust your stop loss automatically. Trade station, you got the chart trading, you just drag and drop lines. If you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, you probably suck at trading. Trading's probably miserable for you. You got to go in there. Like putting an order in in TOS is like typing in higher, like putting in hieroglyphics on a cave wall. Like you got to like write a novel, then proofread it, send it to the editors, then click submit again. Yeah, I guess I wanted to take the trade, but I don't know if I still do anymore. And the options change from TOS. Yeah, as much as I just made fun of TOS, uh, their charts are horrible. There's only one, the, the only thing I would want TOS charts over is Robinhood charts. Uh, let's see. I create your web app if you want. I have some experience with broker APIs. I don't know what that would entail though. We'd have to have everything. TOS has a decent API to pull option chains. Oh, I would want the full access. Like, that's the whole broker. That's everything. You would leave your Robinhood and you would go to my broker. And I would take all your money. Just kidding. That's what that sounds like, though. I don't know why we're on Bitcoin. If I'm bullish a dollar, I would be bearish this. So I'd watch out for that to break down. I do think there's another leg down in crypto coming. As far as the Russell goes, I was this close to grabbing it short. Uh, Russell jumping into that bright zone. Uh, this is a bright zone for a while. So we talked about it can't really be bullish until we got above it. We did just for a few days. Came right back below. So not a good sign. Ultimately, how I'm looking at this. Yeah, okay. I made a video a long time ago talking about my zones. You see how these are just crisp and clean? These lines? Uh, the boxes. I went into Photoshop and I did the uh, where it kind of fades out kind of line. And that's kind of where I'd be. I'd look at this zone with my beer goggles on. Like, we've gotten a little bit above, we've gotten a little bit below. But this area right here, uh, you can see that just a massive game of tug of war between buyers and sellers. Whether you think it's a bullish or bearish news or whatever, a lot of orders just going down right now. And uh, imagine you're walking out, in, you're fifth grade, you're king of the hill, you're walking out in a recess. The whole school, teachers and all, are playing a game of tug of war. You're the last person out to recess, and you got to play this game. Uh, because, well, winner gets paid, loser hopefully gives up a little bit of money and doesn't just hold onto the rope while they go for a victory lap. That's what's, that's what, that's what it's like to not have risk management. Uh, but what side are you going to pick? Uh, the bulls or the bears? Of course, you're going to look at it. You're going you're gonna to gauge, like, 
Uh, I, I kind of look at everything. I, one, the Russell is like a market indicator for me. Like, what's what's small cap up to? What's financials up to? Um, news, I don't care what the news is. I care what they're trying to cram down your throats. Uh, the best example for that was gold. Remember when gold was supposed to go to 3000 It was every article, every five minutes. It's like, And I went short. It's like, that. that's too much. They're trying to sell you a lie. Get out of here. I'm shorting this thing. And it was a great trade because it literally turned the next day. So if I see a whole bunch of news just come out in one direction, probably not taking that one. Uh, there's not right now. It's nothing to really report on that. Uh, you can kind of look at the past in the charts. You can go of a higher time frame, a lower time frame. And right lately, that's been just extremely choppy. Uh, last week, had you gone up or down either time frame, it was a different story. Uh, so last week's conversation was, put your just pick one and go for it. You know, as, as crappy as that sounds, that's why you have a stop loss. But you'll just confuse yourself and never take a trade. Um, which did you short? Yeah, British pound, U.S. dollar. Uh, right now, I would say because we're test nine in from the bottom, I would have to just I would take a short play uh, for now. If you said you're bullish, I couldn't argue with you. Just go for it. You know, where are you going to put your stop? Is it the daily trade? Is it this base right here? Traditional supply and demand might have this whole thing zoned out, and then, like, their stops below there. In the futures realm, you put your stop way down here, that's some decent amount of money. Uh, so people don't like to usually give it that much risk. I'd Max, I'd probably give it this, this green wick. And that's why I'm just not short right now, or, or, or long. I'm just I'm gonna hang out. Let's get some volume in here tomorrow. The one thing I am in no rush to do is trade. Uh, Sunday night, Monday pre market. I ultimately I will buy when it makes sense. I will sell when it makes sense, and that's that. Right now it doesn't really make sense to just be gung ho. So I'm not any other time. Sure, uh, but tomorrow morning the bell will ring. Let the first thirty minutes shake out. If I'm if I'm not thrilled, I don't have to buy anything. I really like to let the, everyone at the bank get their coffee first. Like, hey, why don't you show up? You get comfortable. If I could, I just rub their shoulders. Like, hey, what do you think you're doing? Uh, and then when it when they pick a direction, we go somewhere. All right, I'm on board. Let's let's go. Uh, but I found jumping in early is just a fast way to get train wrecked. You're just jumping on the tracks, assuming like, ah, oh, this is great, and then they just mow you down. Uh, I'm deleting these trend lines, but if you guys look here. Be careful doing this because you sell yourself a position. Remember these trend lines, what this one represented was lower highs. And let's say we turned right here. Is that still a lower high? Yeah, yeah, it's still there. So right now, which trend is your friend? Because depending on your time frame, you go to, like, to the weekly, I'd say that trend, here's your up, here's your down, here's your up, here's your down. Some moves up, some solid legs down, which is what you want in the market. Just more green than red if you're bullish you jump down to like the daily you're probably thinking like all right hang on a second that looks like a little bit more like a bear flag like well we drop down we're kind of basing out it could just be a continuation imagine just cramming the two together and saying that's the play um someone's probably got a head and shoulders drawn out there on stock twits on one of these time frames uh you know who knows they're not accurate either way but you know something's always drawn out stare at something long enough it'll tell you what you want as it sits right now, I would just lean again more more intraday. Like let's let's keep it uh, let's let's stick with the jabs. Quit worrying about throwing haymakers right now uh, and just stick with the jabs. And right now, I'd say we're overbought. We're coming into a zone. Look for a pullback. So I would go short. Once that pops down, I'd put my stop in the green. We melt off to October lows. You're good. If that ends up just being like a little pullback to here and turns around, you'll tag out. But once you put your stop in the green, you take that risk off the table. Who cares? You made a couple bucks, or you potentially made a couple, well, a lot more. Uh, but by that point, we're managing. Just remember, I haven't. I don't know if we've had this rant in a while. There's no such thing as managing a red trade. <laughs> like, did you guys hear it trigger me just, just there? Um, you take the trade, your stop loss. It is what it is. It's where it's at. It doesn't move. The only thing it moves up is like a ratchet. You move that thing up, it makes that clicking noise, and it doesn't budge. Period. The only thing you do is when it's green, you try to suck every dollar you can out of it. If you take that trade, you roll those dice, and it goes against you, stop out. That's it. It's what it's there for. So uh, stopping out, there's like an art to that because you can definitely give it too much or too little. That comes with experience. Hopefully you're picking back and off of mine. But there, there's no such thing as like, let me just move that down just a little bit. No, you can stop out and then get back in. Let's say something, hey, it does still make sense. Maybe that was a shakeout. Uh, they got my stop where it was at. Should I get back in? That's a question to have, not should I just delete that and hang out and wait. 
if you're going to bag hold and not set a stop loss, you're telling me you're going to be the one trader in the world with a 100% accuracy and you're never going to lose a single trade. You're telling me it's green today or green tomorrow. I'm only going to sell when it's green. I know plenty of people that are broke that tried that same thing. And they came in here, they said, I'm going to give the stock market a try. And then they lost all their money doing that same crap. There's tickers no longer here. They know all about the OTC world now. Uh, or they just flat out lost their money. They go in a leverage instrument and the broker shuts down the, the, the trade for you because you went so low. Or it gaps below you and they send you an invoice. That's how wrong you were. You lost all their money and some of theirs. Uh, so they're coming to get it. And they're pretty good at it. So anyway, let's just not jack around with the no stop things. Okay. All right. As far as the expected moves, that, that movie, that movie. If you guys are subscribed to both channels, you're about to get an alert. It should go live at 7.15. So we did do the uh, uh, expected moves video. As far as the cues, this is awkward. I don't like doing stuff right here in the middle. I would prefer to just ran into that zone. The way we blew through that, like, look at that. Like, sometimes I feel like these market makers are like, hang on, we got to let Don know that's still a zone. We'll, we'll check back with him later. That's all the resistance they put up. We're just green, 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 green. You, some might call us a coincidence. Some guy on here did say, I just got lucky. I have been doing this for over 10 years now. Uh, <laughs> I just got lucky again. The only red candles in that zone. Like they just made a pit stop. Hey Don, checking in with you. Yeah, that's a zone. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna head out. <laughs> you know, just keep it rolling. Uh, they went for it. Uh, so the awkwardness around here is like uh, my mentorship group would probably have to correct me if I'm wrong here. I want to say I took a short trade uh, inside here. I don't remember if it even got in the green I tagged out or if I lost money on it. Uh, but I was watching that zone. Stop out and forget the market. Market for, forgive days when you're under PDT. Oh, for five days? Oh, okay. Stop out and forget the market for five days when you're under PDT. When you're under PDT, so I, I quit my job under PDT. I don't know, people love to put that number on a pedestal. If you can't make money with three trades, it makes you think you're going to make it with 3,000. Uh, but yeah, if you don't have a day, the, 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 the stopping out, when I was under PDT, it was like, I'm going to swing trade this, so I'm on a higher time frame, which naturally I wouldn't stop out, but my safety net was always there. Like, hey, things get weird, get me out of this thing. So it was very rare that it even triggered that. Uh, and on this account right here, remember, it's $150 a week account. We've not day traded once yet. Uh, so there's still plenty of money to be made, swing trade. These markets do kind of suck. Uh, but yeah, let's say if, if that is a bigger problem. Let's say it smokes your stop three times. You're it. Uh, it's a rolling five days. Hopefully, you didn't just waste them all in one day, but maybe it worked out that way. If you do not have that day trade left, you do not have the ability to take a trade. Um, there are ways around that. I do have a PDT hack video. Uh, just watch that video to explain because there is a way you can get in there, but it's only with leveraged um, ETFs, uh, inverse ETFs, because at least that way you can still lock in profits lock in losses without actually taking a day trade um i've got two videos on how to do it with options how to do it with inverse etfs uh but that's it yeah trade futures no pdt yeah futures and forex yeah stocks are the only thing that has a pdt rule and it's one of the you have to put the most capital up for the the least amount of returns i'm sorry it sounds like a sales pitch i promise uh it's not buying stocks is kind of one of the as far as the trade goes one of the dumber things you can do uh if it strictly speaking uh capital efficiency i can't there's not a futures contract for tesla or uh, individual companies uh but yeah like if you're gonna say hey don i'm gonna buy spy i'm gonna buy spy options or i'm gonna buy the futures futures easily number one spy options would be number two uh and then spy number three like cool can't wait to though well, there's leverage etfs of spy uh, which which you could grab and then spy. Spy is you'd put up so much capital to make a few bucks, uh, but with that turtle should be pretty easy to trade. Anyway, get on to the Nasdaq. We're not even there yet. What I would watch out for right now is a pullback into that zone, and I'd rather buy the dip. If if you a gun to my head right now, I'd be short with the stop above that green wick. I would not give it much wiggle room. Pull back into this zone right here. I'd look for the dip buy. We melt off overnight. I'm gonna go long Monday morning. Um. 
Because we could just get down and just go full sin mode. We really could. But I would still rather watch that zone. They told you right here that's a zone. So hang tight. Because I doubt we just blow through that without anything. What I would do is grab that right there. And if it pops up, put my stop in the green. So even if I went short right here, at one point it did go down. That would have been a green trade. Uh, so that's what I would do tomorrow morning. If, that, if it panned out that way. Uh, the way we did just send it Friday, I think we do have some kind of profit taking or pullback. The question now for you and only you can answer this is, is that a downtrend or is this a, a weekly kind of like uptrend as in like, so there you have it, a giant bull flag or a little baby, baby bear flag. Not sure on the one man, they're both just giants. As far as cues go, look at that, a little bit cleaner. Hedging always ends in disasters. Yeah, hedging is locking in a loss regardless. Hedging's dumb. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm hedging it. I'm like, cool. You know, I know you love to sound like a market maker, but please stop. It's a lot better. And I've even hedged stuff. There, there's, there's a time and place for it. But to hedge every bet is like, man, grab your little peanuts and make a decision. That's it. There, there's no need to... Hedging is really for like when volatility is around the corner. Like, uh, hey, I have a billion shares of this, but earnings is tonight. And I just don't want to get bent over and smoked. You know, like, well, why don't I just hedge it then? It's a certain time and place for it. You were just going to chop around? We could. I'd prefer we just sell off and get right here. Uh, so right now, first of all, my only trade over the weekend was SPXS. So full send mode. So I am short over the weekend. hope it does go down. Um, however, that will be managed if we do just chop and go sideways. Because right now, bulls sent it. So when things push up like this, it will pull over or pull back. Um, and right now, I'm hoping for the pullback option. If it pulls over, remember the stopwatch is part of the trade. So if it just goes sideways, I'd say the bulls are catching their breath like they did here. And we're ready to send it again. So more immediately... Over, oh, I'm about to say overbought and bullish. Uh, I guess that is the thing because I think we are a little overbought. I think we do bring it back some. Now, the question is do we bring it back some, or was this just to get, is this like a, a fake out for bears? You know, stop them all out, a bunch of shorts get out. Uh, we can argue about why that push happened. Some people think it's zero days to expiration. All legitimate arguments, by the way. Uh, short, zero days to expiration with delta hedging, just full sin mode. There's gamma risk at the end of the week. Uh, we could talk about shorts getting out. There's a bunch of people short there because uh, the Bears did get – that was a breakdown right here. And then maybe they loaded up short and then got out. Shorts getting out is all buy side activity. For whatever reason, they went for it. Uh, so right now we need to kind of judge how strong this move is. Uh, so pulling over, bullish, pulls back to just here. I'd say bullish. Uh, for me to probably really switch gears and be bearish, we have to have – so see how there's like these red candles – and then there's these red candles, the, the size difference. We start showing up like that Monday morning, start hopping and skipping down. I'm on the bear train. Well, I'm already on the bear train, but like I would be on it if I wasn't a lot quicker. Elevator up, stairs down. <laughs> I'm looking for the express route out the window. Uh, it's a lot easier when things do trend that way. But same question right here, guys. So we have just a kind of a more immediate, is that like a bear flag? Is this the start to a downtrend? Is this the next lower high? Or is it something more along the lines of like a weekly time frame where this was the higher low, we're just starting our way up. Because a pullback and a higher low right here, I got to assume this is probably more what we're dealing with. Uh, but that being said, I do think we get all the answers we need in the next two weeks. Because when CPI comes out, um, put it this way. CPI is bad, October lows. If CPI is not bad, I'm not going to say all-time highs. But we kind of continue this grind up. Uh, and that's where I see it. And, and that's probably why also we're seeing uh, the last time the VIX got bought up like this was March of 2020. So we're seeing a lot of people hedge. And then now, don't get smoked on this trade. But I can kind of agree with it just in this circumstance right now. Uh, UVXY. This is actually a trade I'm thinking about taking in the uh, that Patreon account, um, the the growth account, uh, just for some some kind of hedge. Think how much money a trader can make in a sideways market if execution is on point. Oh yeah, uh, I hope I hope it is sideways. It, it would suck for investors. The YouTubers have to have a. It's a lot harder to make content when everything's just choppy and sideways. Uh, but let's say I know we're ADD in this up right now. 
CPI is good. We're all good. It's a, it's a soft landing with some bad reports mixed in. Uh, like I said back here, if this is the, the absolute low, then this is going to be the high for a while. Uh, that's why I drew those lines in the first place. We had this conversation back in October. It was like, oh, the bull market's here. It's like, nah, it's a little bit too soon. Uh, but if it is, sideways. Now, as an investor, that would suck. You would be on this, if you're watching your account, a roller coaster just going up and down the whole time. Some days you're up, some days you're down. Some days you're just less green uh, or less red. Um, but imagine a range from here to here for a year or two. As a trader, we would be loading up here, dumping it all here. And it'd be a cakewalk uh, overall with execution. There's going to be a lot of this that would fake you out in between. But we'd have two very key points. We would, as traders, would absolutely destroy the market. So I hope it does. You think uh, the Feds are going to pause but no pivot? Uh, Fed pivots, that's when the uh, they should get bearish. Now nah, we'll see. Uh, I mean, I'm not an economist, so I, I don't really care. Uh, we'll just take it day by day. Classic song my mama told me. You better shop around. Oh, no. Um, oh, what's up, guys? 100 of you guys here. Can you guys do me a solid hit the, uh, the thumbs up button for me? How long have we been going? 20. I got four minutes left. I'm going to keep this one 30 minutes. I got to get to my mentorship group. Um, so while you guys are let me know what tickers you want me to break down real quick in the in the chat, uh, there's a link, two links down below, right? Trading suites. That's so the teachable link trading suite. That's that's a course. Uh, right now there's options and supply and demand. Uh, I'm gonna finish up supply and demand has a few more videos, uh, and then we're gonna do uh, futures, then forex. So trading suite will just have all of it. Uh, but then there's the Patreon link. Patreon has two links or two tiers, I guess. Tier one chart links, and you. I'm just gonna post everything I do in that weekly growth account. Um, my only goal is to Jeremy from financial education is doing one. And, uh, so I'm copying him hundred percent, not just trades, but the $150 per week. I'm going to, my goal is to, like lap him. I want to double what he does. Uh, at least the, fr yeah, every year, as a matter of fact, uh, once we start getting hundreds of shares of things, we should be able to just lap them on the regular. Um, so, but the first year is going to be the, if you want, he catches a home run. Anyway, I got to destroy it. Uh, but anyway, tier two is the, the midship. So, uh, we go live every day. We, you're in the private chat, so you can tag, talk to me all day long. Uh, also this week we, we, we brought it back, we do homework assignments. So, uh, we gotta get to that tonight. So I do post a blank chart. You guys got to zone it out, post it up and then, uh, I'll give you the answer key. We're going to go, well, I'm going to go over from left to right blank chart. Uh, and then we'll see kind of where we land and who was right. Who was, can't say who was right or who was wrong, but who agreed with me and who didn't. Fertilizer plays? No, that's a Russia play again. Nah, I heard about that a while back. Um, Got to get your Patreon? Yeah, why not? It's five bucks a month. If you did that, this is year to date plus the eighty dollars down here. Um, let's say, let's say I'm just completely off. Then Ford never paid me the eighty dollars, so we don't have to add eighty to that. You have spent what, January, February, depends on when you signed up. So you're two months in, you're, you're 10 bucks. Hmm. Maybe your account's super green. Maybe you, maybe you beat those gains. It's only up like 15%, uh, something like that. Let's see, at the end of the year, it needs to be more. But I bet at the end of the year is when we see a lot of the growth. Uh, I've already done this once. Uh, it was a LPP days. It was 200 bucks in February. Uh, at the end of the year, it was 16,800. 16, uh, hopefully, we do a little bit better than that this year. Uh, but even then, most of that, like, I was at 10,000 in, like, uh, like, October. Most of that, because once you have money, you can, you can kind of make some moves. You can, you can do something. It's really hard. It's really about the percentage gains in the beginning, which uh, I got to say sucks. Percentage move, like dollar wise, just comparing the two accounts, I do the same amount of work and I'll make thousands in my main account and I'll make five bucks in my other account. Like, sweet. Man, it sucks and I have capital. It really does. So I feel you guys. If, you're, if your account's at that two grand mark, uh, it sucks. But YOLOing some dumb crap is the fastest way to get it back to zero and start over again. All right, so I saw Meta and Tesla. 
uh, despite futures being so I actually liked it. I did not like it when it broke that. So gapping into that and then going, I think, was a uh, a decent sign. Just want to say, let me zoom in for you guys. Nailed it. Killed it. Anyway, actually, let's go back to this. Fifty-six bucks. We bought one share. Now, most people will not want to buy one. It's all I could afford in that account. One share. Most people are like, well, give me something cheaper. Give me something under $10. So they go out and buy some dumb crap penny stock. And it just gets chopped in half. Destroyed. Because they want to buy 100 shares. I want to buy 100. I want to buy 1,000 shares. You want to play? You think you're playing market maker. By, you're still spending the same amount. Get your ego out of it. I, I've made more in one share than you'll make on any penny crap all day long. Because you probably are buying into a pump and dump. By the time you hear about the pump and dump, it's already too late. You're about to buy the highs. You're just hoping it goes higher. Uh, so on that rant, people with the smaller accounts, they do, they do this a lot. I see this as a pattern a lot. Like, hey Don, what are you buying that's like under, under ten dollars? Like nothing, because it's, it's that way for a reason. You know, there's a reason Amazon was priced at thirty five hundred bucks, and there's a reason your POS is marked at sixty cents. You know, like it, there's there, there's two different companies there. Uh, so anyway, that rant's over. Uh, all right, Meta. Man, if it could pull back into there, I think we're, that's worth an add-on. If it pulls back and holds that zone, uh, Meta's still one of my... I, I'm on board the AI trend, so I was going to say Meta's still my favorite, uh, but Microsoft is, uh, for the year, Microsoft's thinking my favorite one. Uh, Microsoft and AI. I bought AI last week. I told a mentorship group about it. I know I had earnings that shot up. That's it. I, I didn't buy it in my trading account, though. So hopefully AI can just send it. Whether it's a good company or not, it'll just hopefully take advantage of the trend uh, and, and hype going into AI. Uh, but I won't let that trade go red. Or that ticker. Purchase 20 shares of cost. Okay, I will. I saw that comment. I will look at cost. Uh, you can meet my boy, Eddie. <laughs> uh, Meta, I don't think I'd want to buy right here. I, I, I really would. I'd rather wait for that, that pullback and get a better entry right here. Uh, and I would do that. I would stop at 175. I don't like stopping at 175. I, yeah, 174, 85. So I'd be giving about 10 bucks per share. Guys, if you only want to risk a, 100 bucks, you could buy it right now. You'd only buy 10 shares. You could. It would drop five bucks, and then you could buy 20 shares. See how that math works? A entry, realistic stop loss. And then how much per share, how much are you willing to risk? How many chips are you willing to put down on the table? Adjust your shares accordingly. I would risk the same buying here as the buying here. I would just have more shares down here. I'm up pretty good due to following your AI play. I don't do callouts. These are not callouts. But if you agreed with my play and my analysis, I'm glad you did. I'm glad we were great minds were thinking alike right there. Hmm. All right, so yeah, I don't. I would just, I would wait if I can just get it closer to 180. I'd rather buy. Uh, as far as Tesla goes, uh, aren't they doing a recall now? I saw re people love because I actually do like Tesla a lot. People will love to tell me everything about it uh, in my chat. They like to argue. Um, we don't have some. T there we have we have some Tesla fans in the in the chat. We also have some not Tesla fans. But there's a Tesla recall on the Model Y. A physical recall. Of three thousand cars, that that guy, there's probably three thousand Model Ys where I, just in the city I live in. So uh, when it when it comes to, that's a bearish article, you know. But typically it's like an Audi just smacks a guardrail and someone posts Tesla wrecks full self driving. You know, like that that was a suburban. What do you what do you mean? <laughs> At least it's like a real one. So every manufacturer has recalls the fact that it's only three thousand to me seems light if you're not in the automotive industry then maybe maybe you think that's a lot that's nothing uh but it is i, it, I don't know if it's their first or one of their first where they've actually it wasn't just over the air like hey we recalled it anyway while you were sleeping we fixed it over the air so we'll see if that garnishes any like red movement to to tesla uh, hopefully we want to get another meet kevin crying video out of it uh, but if futures continue red, that'll likely gap down in the morning. Right now, though, I gotta say that 180. I was hoping to buy at 185. 185 is a. Uh, I would for now. I would call it buy. Here's what I would look out for. 
it gets into this zone, bounces, and doesn't even make it to the blue zone. So watch out for this if you are trading Tesla. Say we just full send mode, whatever, you get your buy, and it comes up to there. I would have my stop. I'd put my stop in the green. If I bought anywhere in this yellow, the second it gets out, I'd put my stop right there. 187.45. Because if that turns like that, it's going to look like a lower high and just come on down. So we probably got enough buyers in here to bounce this thing up one more time. Maybe we get outside the expected move, like come down in here, then rain it back in. Uh, all's well. It'd be a perfect week. It wouldn't be nothing extra bearish or anything. Uh, but the second it gets out of that zone, I'd put my stop in. Because we bounce here. And it does it again i wouldn't be a buyer at that point i think we're, we're just testing all the buyers there and there might not be anyone left at the party uh and, and i don't want to be there if no one else is i'm on the <laughs> i'm an elon fan the cars are stupid in my opinion <laughs> uh the, yeah i get why the, the car is not having like a, a radiator or anything in the front they do look very different th than all the others uh i, I gotta shout out sarah dici sarah dici rhymes with peachy I, I, I absolutely hate that intro I would never tell her that to her face because I think that, that would be mean, but I can't stand that intro. Like maybe like one time, like, Hey, it's DG. Yeah. It rhymes with PG. And then like, I would never say that again. Anyway, she did a video, uh, driving the, uh, the new GM Hummer. Now she got one of the ones that actually runs, doesn't need to be towed. Uh, but she said Tesla's in trouble. The one thing she did like was she gets in this Hummer and there's a whole bunch of buttons. <laughs> Like a three-year-old with a sensory issue. You know, like, I just like to touch things. Uh, as a human being, I can almost agree with that. There are minimalist people that just like a very minimalist thing. And I think they'll continue to like Tesla. But with everyone else coming out, they got all the buttons and cool stuff they can do. Like, for the ADD people, like, that is kind of cool. And then, uh, right now, Tesla's tech is on. This is kind of the conversation later for uh, competition coming in. Is, uh, do they, like... It'd be hard to buy an EV not Tesla right now just because of the tech, what Tesla's done, the data they have. Like, If tech is like here and here, but like tech's here, but I like the looks of this one that much better, that, that's not that far. But the, the gap is just my other hand's not on screen. Like, If the gap's that far, I would have to buy Tesla. Um, you'd rather a charger? Hmm. I don't know. I wouldn't. I'd rather not have anything not Tesla right now for the the charging and the, the tech behind it. But this is still the first phase of EVs, and I will say, I wonder if Elon's going to come out with something that's not the minimalist, because that's going to look like um, you couldn't afford those features right now. Minimalist. Uh, yeah, that's what broke people called. I couldn't afford furniture in my house, so I live in a bachelor pad where my mattress is sitting on the floor and my TV. It's just sitting on the carpet next to it. You know, like that's what a minimalist is going to look like. That's what Tesla's going to look like if they don't come out with a car that has buttons in it. I know it sounds really stupid. Because, uh, like Elon preaches, there, there's no, uh, the best part is no part. It's just more crap to break, which I fully get. But I'm very curious in America, where we, we quit selling cars because all we buy is SUVs and trucks, you know, that will never even see gravel. Uh, but people have, how many F 250s have you seen down the road? They've never seen a speck of dirt little garage queens uh anyway but in america we just like big things we just like to overdo things i wonder how that pays out with tesla later not into an ipad with wheels <laughs> we put it that way it sounds cool it's not talking about my house <laughs> i was in that phase uh some of you guys are lucky oh, i was lucky enough to not have a house i don't know if you call that lucky but definitely turned my emotions off uh my free couch is great yeah, but when you're spending a hundred thousand dollars on it, well, I guess the prices have come down, so we'll call it sixty grand. I got sixty grand. I can buy Ford's Ford TV. I got buttons. I got cool stuff. It looks like a normal car, which is just kind of what people want. Or I got this minimalistic thing. Well, yeah, they got the charger station, but I don't live in China. I have a I have a garage. I've, I've, I can, I'm gonna charge it overnight anyway. I'm never gonna leave with not a full tank. So this whole like, what happens when the battery dies? Like, I guess I would just use my IQ that's higher than 12 and not drive like, like to what happens when the battery dies it's the same thing as what happens when your car runs out of gas for those of you guys that haven't figured that out yet that's what happens uh, they both lose their power anyway, I don't know how we even got on this rant but anyway <laughs> I wonder if Tesla does have some competition eventually because sometimes people just like buttons and we will buy off of those buttons 
It's a shell game for something better. Hmm. All right, let's do a. When I said thirty minutes, I was just kidding because it's I've never done a stream that short in my life. I never will. Costco, that's what it was. I knew I was forgetting one. Let's talk about Costco. Do you know they do a special dividend? <laughs> Just want to carry that off for Brad. Every time Brad brings up Costco, he's like, they should have a special dividend coming out soon. Eventually. It's been two years. They do have one. I'm mocking Brad because he keeps saying that. And they just keep not doing it. Uh, so he, it's going to come out and he's, he's going to say he was right. Um, uh, Alright, so you bought Costco. Maybe Lucid Glad buttons. Lucid should probably just try to make a car that people can afford. And uh, let's just try to make the car in the first place. Lucid is probably not going to be here next year. Uh, Costco Friday morning after Thursday afternoon at 470 each. Uh, okay. Uh, you definitely caught a knife. I mean, I don't, I don't need to tell you that. but So you bought it at 470. So you nailed that zone. And it bounced up. If I caught that knife, my stop would be right now at 472.35. Now, when I'm buying an uptrend, like let's say you bought 470 right here, and it's up. I might even give that a little bit. That thing's looking good. That's a higher low. I don't. There's no need to rush, all right? I'll put my stop in, but I don't want to just stop out the first 30 minutes of a day and get out of a trade for no reason. You didn't buy an uptrend. You bought a waterfall. Uh, and know that when you're buying a downtrend like this, you, you caught the knife, and, and that, that's cool and all. Uh, there's no need to take the, a knife catch. Should do one of two things, green or red, instantly. Because you're going to put your stop in the green, you're going to make a couple bucks, or you absolutely bought the bottom and it continues on forever and ever, and you're rich. Or you jumped on the tracks and you got ran over, so you stop out. But when I buy a knife, when I buy a knife, when I, when I buy, yeah, when I catch a knife like that, I put my stop instantly in the green. Because what's to say that's going to change? Like, you bought this knife right here, like somebody bought it right here and it gapped down and just went right below them the next day. So I avoid that at all costs. I don't like I don't like green trades going red. Uh, nothing. I'd put my stop in. So yeah, you bought at 470. My stop 472.35. Pray, fingers crossed. I wouldn't even probably look at the chart the first 30 minutes tomorrow because I'm gonna be honest, you're likely to tag out. This is where people become bag holders because I'll say something like that. Hey, put it at 472.35. It'll drop down. It'll tag out and just hit the burners and it'll be at 488 by the end of the day. You're like oh, I knew I shouldn't have tagged out. The next day happens. And it just, it's in sin mode to the south side. Like, oh, they're not catching me. They're not shaking these weak hands. <laughs> and then you just get destroyed. Uh, either way, that's what I would do. I would stop out. And if I see they hit the burners and we're going for it, it ends up being a wick, I'll jump back in. And you guys have heard me say this. If you've been in here for any amount of time, uh, I say this all the time. I will, I will lose twice before I give up. So I don't know if I'd call that an L, but if it tags out, I would get back in. Now, if it tags out again, I'm probably going to call it good. Like, hey, something's not jiving right here. I'm not just going to keep beating the dead horse, whatever you say. Uh, so many dead animal references. Uh, speaking of dead animals, that's a dead cat bounce. Best case right now. Uh, anyway, yeah. Once I take the two losses on the same trade, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to come and try a different ticker. I'm going to come back later because what I'm seeing just isn't panning out. The volatility is just there. Uh, my Costco dividend is my Costco rewards check I just got. <laughs> I just got that too. Uh, so I got, I know I'm excited. I got that Costco uh, credit card, the the city card. I was just buying stuff on that. I didn't know how many rewards I got off that. I was like, what is this rewards thing on the app? It was a lot. I didn't realize how much I spent at Costco. So I kind of feel like they, I need to own more of these shares. I do like Costco. Uh, I think Costco is a little bit pricey right now. I want it as a dividend share. I just, I'd rather it be right there. I'm going to add some right there. Breaks that. Now I'm out. Beautiful trend line. Do you, <laughs> beautiful trend line. Do you focus more on price action and ranges? Of course I do. Yeah, trend lines don't mean jack. Clearly you showed up late. No, not, not a dig. I specifically went over trend lines earlier today because I deleted one uh, at the beginning of the stream. A trend line for me, so I do everything at night right here. I'm not kidding. That's my alert to buy. Uh, I do everything at night when nothing is moving because there's no, there's nothing. I have, a, I have a clear sound mind. There's no news being crammed down my throat. Nothing. I know when it hits this, I want to buy. So tomorrow morning, 
my watch will vibrate and I'll buy. Whatever alerts I set, that's what I set with my midship group. I'm about to go live with them right after this, uh, playing all my trades out that way. The reason why I'll do trend lines like this is because I have the full real estate on my screen and tomorrow morning on my phone, I'll see something like this and I'll know, okay, hey, it's making lower, lower highs. So I just kind of know that's a note to myself later. Like this is the situation. Watch out. I know what kind of knife I'm catching right now. Uh, last one coin that I do have to get going. Yeah, I will break it down for you. Dead animals and knives. What are you talking about? <laughs> City cards have horrible customer service, but the benefits are good. Yeah, I've never called them. Uh, Jake, we're going right now. We're about, I'm gonna I'm looking at a coin, and that's that. Uh, all right, so right now, as far as coin goes, so we're, we're still making lower highs. We're still making higher lows. That game of back and forth, that game of tug of war, still going on. That's going to mess up my OCD. Hang on. That's really just snap to it. There we go. All right, uh, one of these is going to break. Uh, if, it, if it pulls back, I don't, personally, I would not buy. I would not catch that knife right now. Uh, I actually am a fan of Coin. I like the company. Uh, just not a fan of this particular stock right now. Uh, so I would hang tight. I think crypto's got another at least one more storm in it before it does. And people love to instead of just buy Bitcoin, they love to buy Coin as their exposure to it. Uh, I just wouldn't play that game. So if crypto takes another hit, people are going to sell. Uh, Coinbase stock uh, fundamentally doesn't really make sense because Coinbase, Coinbase is still going to make their fees off of it, but people will do it. You'll watch it. Uh, and I'd rather just wait for a cheaper time to buy if that was going to be something for me. Uh, all right. Anyway, guys, I do have to get off here. I have to get to my mentorship group. Uh, again, that's Patreon. That is tier two. Tier one is just going to be my chart link plus my, my growth account, uh, uh, which I got to say, probably about to get spicy. If you guys are it's not for call outs and posting everything I do. Just know that it's going to be above 2000 and uh, this week and margin turns on. So right now, like if I wanted to buy Microsoft, I have to wait two weeks to buy it going forward. If there's something I want, I'm buying it. Uh, so it will be in margin. Um, anyway, that's uh, all in fair warned. Not going to be ridiculous with it, but I do want to have, we already got Microsoft there might be a UVXY play coming up. So if you are on the Patreon, uh, it should note if you have the app, it'll notify you. If not, it emails you every time I, I alert everybody. But yeah, I know there's 10 homework charts I have to work out. So I do have to get to my midship group right now. We do have a homework assignment. Uh, so if you like homework as an adult, check it out. Everyone else, you will see me, uh, you'll see me tomorrow. Have a good one.